protect from uh, from infection is a very important one, and that's one that's uh, actively being researched. What you ex assume from many other virus infections is that uh, if you have neutralizing antibodies, that they will protect to a certain degree from reinfection. Uh, the important part here is that it depends on how much antibody you have. Uh, we know that from, from many other viruses, there are what's called correlates of protection, for example, for influenza virus, for measles, for hepatitis A, for hepatitis B. And so basically you can put a number on, on uh, the level of antibody that you need uh, in order to reduce your risk significant, significantly. Um, and so we have ongoing studies right now uh, at Mount Sinai, but also through some uh, NIH networks now uh, throughout the nation to actually find that out, uh, get us a number, how much antibody do you need to be protected from infection? I think that's very important work. Uh, we do get encouraging uh, evidence from uh, animal models where we see that anti the presence of antibodies in non-human primates is protecting from reinfection specifically uh, in the lower respiratory tract in the lung. And uh, there's also uh, um, uh, evidence from, from different animal models, including hamster models, um, that uh, the presence of antibodies and the titer of antibody uh, really correlates with, uh, with the degree of, of uh, susceptibility to infection, meaning the more antibody you have, the less susceptible you are. But unfortunately, we have to wait for some time uh, to conduct these studies uh, to find out more about the protective effect of the antibodies and also of the antib antibody ki kinetics to see how long they last and how stable they stay. And these are studies that are ongoing. Uh, we have initial results that are encouraging, um, but again, uh, it has been a short time since this uh, pandemic started. And so we need more data and more longitudinal data.